Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Cutter One. I am your host, Jay, just Jay, your resident maker of trouble and your resident culture warrior. And uh, well, 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 you know, I'm not one of those types of people that goes, I told you so, um, but I told you so. Uh, new article came out and it's sort of, it, it reinforces and sort of to a certain degree, um, confirms a lot of what we've been saying regarding the Rings of Power. Let's check it out. This coming to to us from CBR.com. A Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power audience shrank every week. Who would have thought? A new report suggests the viewership from Amazon Prime's videos, The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, steadily declined with each new episode. New reports show that the viewership for Amazon Prime's video, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, contracted every week during its inaugural eight-episode run. According to an analysis from Variety, Nielsen reports indicate that the show earned 1% fewer minutes streamed every consecutive week, with comparatively few viewers starting the show in the weeks after it premiered. The show also seemed to have its largest drop-off after the first two weeks. And if you remember, myself, as well as other people like uh, Ryan from RK Outpost pointed out, it was a 40% drop from episode uh, between episodes one and two versus episode three, 40% drop in viewers. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. The show also seemed to have its largest drop-off after its first two weeks, which showed a decline of around 20%. They say 20%, hmm. The numbers were, 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 I think it was like 12.7 million per episode for the first two episodes, which is how they got that 25 million number. Um, but then the third episode was like at 7.4. So, I mean, do the math. If you're up at like 12.6, 12.7, whatever it was, and you drop down to 7.4, it's roughly, it's about 40%. 40% drop. So uh, this suggests that a good amount of viewers who streamed the Rings of Power early on gave up on it pretty soon afterwards. And you guys have even com confirmed that here in some of the comments. A lot of people saying, hey, I tried it. You know, I got through one or two, bro. But after that, you know, I had to tap out because, it, you know, the, the, the levels of crap was just too much. Um, so the numbers apparently um, through Nielsen and Variety are also bearing that out. Uh, the Rings of Power's mystifying metrics. While Nielsen, Nielsen's metrics only measure U.S. viewership connected to television, excluding viewers streaming on other types of devices, the visible downward trend is notable in the trade's analysis, which sees it as problematic for the show's future growth. Yet, the Rings of Power is still making a victory of its impressive early early viewership numbers. According to Amazon, the Lord of the Rings prequel series, excuse me, saw an impressive 25 million viewers in the first 24 hours after its premiere. These numbers made it Prime Video's most watched series premiere to date. And again, I, I previously just mentioned that, you know, by episode three, they had lost 40% of those viewers. However, the show also saw a spike in demand following its October 14th series finale. According to Parrot Analytics, there was an impressive 55.7 times increase in viewership, which was an all-time high viewership number for season one of the show. Those numbers may bode well for season two of The Rings of Power, which has officially begun filming outside of London, England. The show's executive pro producer, Lindsay Weber, already teased that the show creators have some epic things in store for the new episodes, saying that, quote, it's going to be grittier, more intense, maybe a little scarier, unquote. Now, now that Sauron, Sauron's true identity is finally out in the open. The Rings of Power's big season two plans. Weber wasn't the only one who made big promises for season two of The Rings of Power. Co-show runner Patrick McKay, or as some people have rightly called him, Patrick Decay, um, said that the new season will be bigger and better on every level by an order of magnitude. Part of this may have to do with the fact that he and co-show runner J.D. Payne took audiences' criticisms from season one into consideration. No, they did not. Quote, the cake was kind of baked before the audience response came in, unquote, he said. All right, so right there he's saying that it, what the audience response doesn't matter. Certainly, you look at audience response and you see what characters people love and what kinds of storytelling moves them. And explaining that, while he and McKay aren't overcorrecting for any of it, they are listening to people's responses. So, all right, we've covered that sort of portion enough 
like in a couple of videos now, so I'm not going to like touch on that aspect of it. But I think it's interesting that you have this new report saying that, you know, based on Nielsen's numbers and while they are limited, they are not the full picture. According to Nielsen's numbers, Variety is now saying that, you know, when you do some math and some calculations, it looks like for each successive episode of Rings of Power, they lost viewers. Okay, didn't gain viewers, didn't maintain a certain level of viewership. They lost a percentage with each new episode, which is not surprising because everybody that I've spoken to, everybody, all the other YouTubers that, that I watch all agree that the show is crap. You guys in the comments, you know, um, you know, it's definitely not just me. Like, you know, you guys also agree that it, it was crap. And I don't think anybody looking at these shows objectively can say that they were by and large good. Um, like I said, I will concede that some, some, some of the visuals were really good. Okay. Some of the exterior sort of visual stuff was really nice. Other than that, though, the writing sucked. The adherence to the lore sucked. Um, the acting, by and large, sucked. And that may not be the actor or actress's fault. It may just be the script that they're given. Um, but overall, the show has almost no redeeming qualities, almost none, except for the meme that I created with Guy Ladriel. Um, but yeah, so let me know what you guys think. I just think it's cool because, like, you know, we were, we've been talking about this now, and um, now we're starting to see some metrics come in that are supporting what we, the fans, have been saying and have known for a while, and that is that this show got progressively shittier with each episode and it lost viewers with each episode it's interesting to note though that amazon has not released any of the numbers for this quote-unquote massive successful show that they keep claiming it was this great mega hit that they claim to have on their hands they haven't released any numbers other than those initial numbers from like the first 24 hours that it was out um they're not releasing the overall numbers for the show. And again, the silence is deafening. It speaks volumes to uh, to what they know and what we know. And that is that the show is crap. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share the video if you're so inclined. <coughs> Excuse me. Watch me choke to death. And um, also... If you would be so kind, hopefully I can earn your subscription. You will hit the red subscribe button and join us here on our adventure as we build this thing into an unstoppable force. And then we join with other unstoppable forces that are out there in the YouTube sphere. And we all together sort of rescue Hollywood from itself. I don't know. It's just a thought. Just an idea. Anyway, I hope to talk to you guys soon. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.